And when you were invited, you said whatever was in your diary had to give way. Why? Asante sana. Um, I wanted to reminisce quite a bit about my experience working with Jaramogi Ogingodinga and our time in the second liberation. But a lot of the strands have already been taken out and the interest of uh, brevity, I'll just take two of the things I wanted to talk about. One is where Mze Ketu Gahengeri has just left off. Inspiring young people to work with older people for a shared purpose. The week before he died, Jaramogi invited us to his hotel room in Mombasa. Peter, you were there. Orengo, you were there. Gitobi Manyara was there. Paul Mwite was there. And one of the things that he said to us, the last conversation we had with him, he thanked us for making him feel young. You gave me young energy. And I'm very happy about that. You even added me years without feeling youthful. And the second thing, he said, always fight on when we have not reached our goals. I find this important because some of the challenge I feel we are confronting today as a country is the inadequate fusion, meeting ground between the experience of old, the energy of young in confronting the continuing threat to our democratic order. We must look afresh at how can we rebuild the bonds between generations to deal with the major challenges which are threatening to reverse the gains that people like Jaramogo Gingo Diga fought so much for, sacrificed themselves for. The second which really builds into that first statement for me is... Jaramogi was a study in humility but with determination. He was not a very person, but he was a very consistent and persistent person. And working with him through those years, through those in intense moments, I could see a person who was saying the cause is larger than ourselves. This is important to me today because I fear that enough voices in this country talking truth to authority. When young men were raided in their homes in Kondele and died later when they were taken to hospital, there was not sufficient outrage in this country. When Jaswinda Rai was abducted by agents of the state and a president started promising illegality, there was not enough outrage about that behavior. When Margaret Jakang, the control of budget, was humiliated, purportedly because of some infringement of many years earlier, we kept a similar silence. Jaramogi will not be so silent. The best way we can honor Jaramogi, speak truth to authority. We are not here by invitation. We were not given a gift of liberation. Our second liberation saw people sacrifice their lives, saw people spend decades in detail, saw families broken up. We cannot let persons who buy power intimidate us. And my friend, the leader of minority in parliament, the parliament of Kenya today is the most gullible since the Mulolongo parliament of the late 80s. The good news is that usually such a terrible parliaments give way to liberation. Let us not make the sacrifices of silenced legislators without the gain of emboldened nationals, linking our hands, seeing every struggle as our own, seeing every infringement on the rights of Kenyans, seeing every unjustified attack on the judiciary as attacks on our order. And that if we become complacent and look the other way, Jaramogi will sit and comfort him in his grave. Thank you very much, Dr. Mukesa Kitui. Last but not least.